Well, hello my friends and welcome back to another episode. This is gonna be part two of the Northwood Manufacturing Tour. So in part one, we learned a lot about truck campers and we learned a lot about sidewalls, how they make their sidewalls. We went in depth with a lot of key components of the RV, but in today's video, I'm gonna kind of skip over certain areas that I've already covered in the previous video. So if you haven't already seen that video, I'm going to link it in the description below and I'm also gonna put the title right here. So if you feel like it, go and check that video out first and then come back and check this video out. But for those who haven't seen the first video or for those who don't want to go see the first video, I'm gonna quickly skim over what we learned about basically the first process of it all, which is the aluminum structure and the lamination process to make sidewalls and other components in your RV. Like I said, it's gonna be very brief because a lot of people have already seen this step in more detail, but I'm just gonna quickly cover it and then we're gonna go on to how they make their travel trailers and fifth wheels. So whether you're making a truck camper, fifth wheel or travel trailer, it all starts with the aluminum superstructure that Northwood is quite famous for. This aluminum superstructure is pre-cut and bundled so it makes it very easy for the welders to start their job. It's an 060 grade aluminum, which is thicker than industry standard. It allows them to do full bead welding. This is the stage where it all gets welded together and ends up looking, well, like a sidewall. And then they're all stacked along here and basically ready for the next step. Yep, so right. this is an Arctic Fox fifth wheel. Oh, this is a fifth wheel, gotcha. Yeah, so it's gonna be an inch and a half compared to an inch on the wolf strip. Gotcha. And then it's on to cutting the high density block foam, which is inserted in place. Now we're ready for the lamination process. All right guys, so it starts with fiberglass and then that board goes on. And then the frame goes on top of that with all the foam inside. And then it's another one of those Luon boards, I believe it's called. And then it's all stuck together. And then it goes through this machine and basically flattens it out and gets rid of uh, any like air bubbles and whatnot. And that's basically what your wall is and many other components of your RV. This roller applies 3,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. Here's a bit of a better visual from Colby who is our tour guide today. Fiberglass, yep. Luon, yep. so all fifth wheels get two layers of Luon. Two layers, okay. R7 high density foam, yep. interior Luon. Gotcha. So the stuff you see on the inside, the stuff you see on the outside. Gotcha, yep. Perfect, makes sense. And just to give you an idea of how strong this high density foam is without any aluminum structure in it, I'm gonna stand on it. And keep in mind, it's embarrassing to admit, but I'm close to 290 pounds. So this is only foam. There's no, uh, there's no framing inside. Oh god. Hey, I'm 290, man. And you step. I'm go, a heavy step guy. Up on it. <laughs> Your wall is then taken over to the CNC router, and that carves out every hole in your sidewall. So there are two big differences with building a truck camper opposed to a trailer. One of them is the chassis and the other is how they construct the roof. So we're gonna primarily focus on those two points. And like I said, I can't stress this enough to go watch the first video to see all of the other work that goes into building these RVs. All right guys, so now we're gonna do a little tour of the travel trailers and the fifth wheels. And it all starts with the chassis or the frame. So on the left or on your guys' right side, we've got a uh, travel trailer frame and then of course, a fifth wheel frame. This is where the, uh, the truck campers were made back here. And this is where the uh, travel trailers and I believe the fifth wheels are over there. So let's go take a look. Okay, so our chassis. So one of the biggest things about all of our chassis is the fact that we build these here in house. So by building these in house, we can do a lot of things that other manufacturers can by relying on another company. So we use thicker grade beams for the structure. So this right here is an eight inch I beam. All right, from side to side, you're gonna see full chunks of steel, okay? You're not gonna do any woven steel throughout to save on weight, because we truthfully do not care about the weight. We care about the structure of the chassis. Everything's gonna be fully welded in place, okay? So this is what your floor attaches to. 
very important. It is common you find L brackets that attach these to the chassis. Reason being, another manufacturer builds the chassis, these do not come attached. Okay, fully welded steps as well. Right here, this is a very key spot on the coach. This is where your leaf spring attaches to the I-beam. Being an I-beam, it's gonna to wanna to torque a little bit. So we put this scrap piece of steel from top to bottom to prevent any torque up and down when you're traveling. Three quarter inch steel gas lines throughout that you'll find right next to your chassis beam, okay? So instead of copper lining throughout, it's a lot easier to run. We do this because if you have a tire blowout, it's not gonna damage your copper line. The other reason it's three quarter inch compared to a half inch copper lining, so your LP will flow throughout your coach a lot quicker and easier. So here we got a travel trailer. This has an integrated A-frame, okay? So the integrated A-frame, you'll notice, goes right throughout and attaches directly to your I-beam where the structure is, okay? I'm gonna say SOB, and I mean some other brand out there, <laughs> mounts the A-frame on the bottom of the chassis, okay? And just an example, we have a little cargo trailer, a little thing we haul stuff back and forth. That's what the SOB looks like, the bottom of the chassis. Batteries are mounted here, fully welded in place. You can go up to group 27 batteries, two of them. If you wanted to do more, you can mount an accessory on top of the chassis as well. LP tank fully welded in place, so your LP tanks aren't gonna fly off. Your tow chains, you're gonna notice, are a lot heavy dutier than most manufacturers use, okay? These chains are 10 bucks a piece. I know, because I bought them for one of my projects. So they are very expensive. So all of our travel trailers made by Northwood will come with shock absorbers, a shock absorber for each individual tire. Okay, so this helps with the ride of your coach, not the fact that you're gonna be driving in it, but everything on the inside is gonna have a nice smooth ride. So your dishes should be where you left them. <laughs> Depending how you drive, right, Taylor? That's right, that's right. Because a lot of uh, a lot of trailers just have leaf springs. Yes. They don't have shock absorbers. Exactly. Yeah, cool. So let's head inside and uh, see a little bit more. Yeah, you know what I might do? I might just show it. So guys, we're just gonna do it quickly because it's kind of the same thing, right? You, you, from, the, from the chassis to the floor, you build inside out. Uh, the chassis obviously is the big difference between a truck camper, also the roof. The roof. So we'll show that just because that's kind of interesting. But other than that, is there any other big difference? Um, your floor is a big difference. Uh, it's lumber compared to fully welded aluminum that's laminated. Right, okay. Like the truck camper floor. Okay. This is key because a lot of manufacturers use smaller grade wood. Half by inch and half. This is a true two by three. Okay. okay. Five eighths inch plywood that goes on top. Yeah. And it's all done in a jig. Oh yeah, okay, so one of those, like a uh, floor plan. Yeah, the floor plan. Yep, so this floor is gonna match the one in front of it. They're gonna be identical. Gotcha, and then everything that's installed, cabinets, that's all the same, Pretty same much idea. Yep. Okay. All the wood that's used in your RV is pre-cut here, and then bundled together so it makes it easy to grab a piece and start assembling. Fresh water. Fully insulated. That's fully insulated, yeah. enough space. Knife valve is enclosed because that will freeze before your tank ever thickens. Yeah, yeah. This is where they make the cabinets for all of the travel trailer and fifth wheel models. Keep in mind that these RVs are built from the inside out. So having your cabinets ready to go is very important. So like you said before, inside out, this is where they start to kind of bring the wiring up, plumbing and all that good stuff, and then just continue on this way. Yep. It's so odd to see these RVs in their different stages along the assembly line. So this is a sidewall which looks like it's for a fifth wheel. And then if you just look behind me, that fifth wheel is completely missing its sidewall. So they're going to take from here and, uh, and put it on the side. It's just neat to see them completely detached. The sidewalls that we previously talked about that were going through lamination, this is when they are put on. Amazing this is where the kids sleep. Is this another one of your... Uh, yeah, extra yeah. bedroom. <laughs> An extra <Yeah>. bedroom? <laughs> yeah. Man, it's, uh, it's crazy to me just how much space is in these fifth wheels. I'm so used to the truck camper. I've been living in, what, like 10 square feet for two years now? And you see these truck campers and they're mad. They're just, they're, they're rolling homes. I mean, look at this one. So this one's got the, the walls on. 
and, and you just keep going down the line and every step, it's a little bit more built, a little bit more built. And then it's time to lock everything in place with the roof. So I'm gonna ask Colby to explain this to you guys a little bit uh, better, but uh, the roof for the truck camper and the roof for the travel trailer and the fifth wheel, they're different. So the uh, truck camper, like you guys saw, was a high density foam. Whereas this is like a home roof with, uh, with trusses. And uh, do you wanna elaborate just a tiny bit on that? Just the comparison between the truck camper and the, uh, this is a travel trailer and fifth wheel have the same roof. Same exact yeah. roof concept. Gotcha. Yep. So what we're using is just like what you find in a home is an actual wood truss. Gotcha. Okay. So wood trusses, we do 16 inch centers, which is key because in the industry standard is two feet. And oh. With two feet sand, uh, centers, you're not going to be able to step everywhere. Right. So when we say full walk on roof, you can literally step anywhere. It can be right in the middle. Right. It can be right on a wood truss, but because we use so many different wood trusses throughout, you can put whatever you want on the roof. Beautiful. It's strong, has five and a half inches of space so we can insulate it with an R18 insulation mm -hmm. in combination with an R15 reflective foil. So these things are fully insulated because all of your heat escapes through the roof. So right here we are starting on Fox Mountain fifth wheels. This is our 235 RLS. But then if you look right here, this is the transition period for the last 29L line. When we go to a different model, there's a transition period where we have to change out all the jigs. Right. And then we switch to the new model. Right. So that's why there's kind of a little gap here in between production, whereas what you've been seeing is trailer, 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 oh, trailer. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yep. Awesome. Start to mount your luggage doors, windows, everything goes into place. This is called molding. Okay. Once they get everything at ground level in place, including decals, it is then going to go to top molding. Okay. Where they'll begin molding everything up on the roof and basically where they can reach on the catwalk. Right. And we can run up there. Fully glued in place, we pretty much paint glue on the plywood. Yep. And then we put your EPDM rubber in place. Okay. And then this is where we'll begin to use our butyl tape and screw everything down into the roof. Gotcha. The slides are then built and then basically craned into the RV. The next step is putting in the furniture. Right. Furniture, and then we mount the entire slide out in place, just like what you see behind you here. Gotcha. You got one of those cool machines to do it? Like an, oh, yeah. just like this. So I'll throw this from down here and hoist it up with that hoist right there. Let's go check out a 90% built travel trailer. So what do you think? This one's 80% done? Uh, 90? Yeah, probably. Let's go see a 90% done camper. Get in there. I love that shot right there. I love that. Do it on yourself. Oh, yeah, that's so neat. We're showing this guy what you're hey, doing buddy. here. Hey, yeah. yeah. Look yeah. at this. Sorry, I'll just get a little footage of this. Heck yeah. It's starting to look like a home, man. So now your flange is in place with this piece of plywood. Yep. So now it's pretty much impossible for the slide out to fall out. Furniture starting to come in. Damn it, Doctor. TV. <laughs> Bathroom. Sink. And this gentleman's working on the bed. Look at that. So after all of that, um, this is the finished product, guys. So the dealership that you go to, you go and walk in and you go, wow, look at that. That design's really neat. This is really neat. A lot of attention to detail over here, over there. It all happens here. Now let's head over to one of the last steps, which is the pre-delivery inspection. These guys can spend two plus hours going through your entire RV, making sure that everything is perfect and top notch. Oh, it just the whole thing folds in. Folds in. Like an airplane. Boom. What? No steps. Nice. What model is this one? The 35 5Z. Is this uh, one of your bigger ones? It's our biggest. Oh, yes. 39 per feet overall weight. Perfect. We're gonna hop in a fifth wheel here. So you've seen the travel trailers, we're gonna hop in the fifth wheel, then we're gonna to go to a truck camper. And this is the, what would you say, final stage? This is the pre-delivery inspection. Pre-delivery inspection. So this is like we talked about when they go over it and uh, they test everything. Yep, everything. They test, and they look for everything. Tests. Yep. So that's why it's kind of a mess in here. Gino's kind of doing all the final inspections, checking everything. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of joking about him taking him camping for six hours. No, oh, that's right, he does, and then he's got to give him away. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Can I walk on the carpet? Go ahead, man, walk wherever you want. Oh, man. 
This is 10 times better than an RV uh, dealership to check them out. Look at this space. Look at this space. Or does that go, Kobe? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. It's climbing the line. Come out and hang out one of these days. Got a nice uh, dry bath. So, my favorite thing about the fifth wheels is the ceiling height. You can just tell you're in a fifth wheel because of the, the, uh, the design of it. The island. And they always have the comfiest chairs back here. Always. Oh. <laughs> maybe one day, maybe one day. Walk around, the other lady find Look at that. <laughs> That's why it's the pre-delivery inspection. Look at that. Oh yeah. But I'm just amazed at how much attention to detail goes into to uh, the RVs. I mean, it just passes through so many people. Um, so when you buy yourself an RV, you know that it's been tested and checked yeah. over and put together by hand, and this is not, it really is neat to see. This one's about ready to come off. I mean, everything's checked. Look at that light. Oh, 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 over there. Everything. All right, so at the very end of the day, you've got the finished product. Now, how does it get to you? Well, this yard right behind me, you see all of these RVs, and this is their transportation branch, I guess you could say. Beeline hauling. And so basically, this company uh, most likely has delivered the RV that you're about to buy to the dealership. So they are all of North America, Canada, US. So the neat thing about this company, I thought that these were shipped with semis. Uh, it's not, it's actually one ton truck. So with the fifth wheel, they can deliver one fifth wheel at a time. And with the travel trailers and truck campers, they can actually pair them up, put the truck camper on and then haul the travel trailer behind it. So they can deliver two at a time. But it's amazing that you see the, this product all over the place, but you never realize how much work actually gets, how much work actually goes into it to get it to where you are. I mean, they've got a dealership up in Alaska. It's in the middle of nowhere. And ta-da, then it gets to a customer like me, who I've been living in this for two years, so it's my home. So straight from there to me, it's kind of neat that this RV that I'm sitting in right now was uh, was built right where I was standing. It all starts there. So if there's something in this video I have not covered, I probably covered it in the first video much more in depth. Once again, go check that out. It's in the description box below. I hope that you guys found some of that interesting. I would have loved to stay there for a month to film every little nook and cranny of the RV, but I was only there for one day of filming. So I kind of had to squish a lot into one single day, but at least you get the basics of how it's all made and uh, it gives me a better appreciation for, for what I'm living in right now. That's it for me, guys. If you're new to the channel, you're more than welcome to subscribe if you feel like it. I got lots of RV videos. I've got lots of tour videos. It's actually crazy. At my last video, the, the, the tour of the one and only truck camper that they made, the only one they produced, the 1163, that video abs absolutely blew up. I have about 400,000 views on that video and I got 4,000 subscribers from it. So it's just crazy. It kind of sucks though. The one video that I did, I put maybe two or three hours into it. It was not a very professional video, I guess you could say. It just blew up. So for anyone who watched watch that for any new subscribers that became a subscriber from that video. I really do appreciate it. I have some really neat videos where I spent hours and hours on the editing process to make it look very cinematic. That was just one video that I didn't do that at all. So I appreciate you uh, trusting me and coming over and subscribing. Thank you very much. Other than that guys, as always, keep living that dream my friends. Until next time, take care of yourselves and uh, Rebecca will be in one of the videos coming up. I'm still with Rebecca. She's still my girlfriend. She just hasn't been in the videos for a while, but she'll be coming up. There'll be a pretty face to the channel soon. See you guys, bye-bye.